Hello and welcome to AK Potter Reviews. Today we will be taking a look at a comparison between two hybrid vehicles. These are the 2014 Toyota Aqua and the 2014 Honda Fit Hybrid. If you're in the market for either of these two cars, then it may be important that you watch till the end to find out all the relevant information about each car so that you may make a well-informed decision. At the end of the video, I'll also tell you which one you should go for and why. Before we start, I'll kindly request you to consider subscribing to the channel for more informative car reviews. You can also support the channel by donating. The details are in the description box. If you intend to sell your car, you can now advertise it on the channel. There are no intermediaries involved in the car sales. If interested, reach me via email or WhatsApp. So the Toyota Aqua Hybrid and Honda Fit Hybrid are gaining traction quite fast in the Kenyan market. People are now embracing the hybrid technology primarily due to fuel efficiency. These two cars are almost similarly priced. You can get both between 800,000 shillings to around 1.25 million shillings, depending on the trim level, condition and mileage. These are the 2014 models to be precise. Now, when it comes to hybrid cars, it's always very important to buy one that has very low mileage so that you can maximize on the battery life. You don't want to buy a high mileage car, then after just two or three years, you need to replace the batteries. These batteries will normally last up to around 10 years, but it also depends on the mileage you put on the vehicle. If you just drive for short distances, then the batteries can last even up to 12 or 15 years. In terms of the insurance, for the third party, it's 7,000 shillings for each car. While for the comprehensive insurance, I got back two different quotations from different insurance companies. The lowest was 37,500 shillings and the highest was 60,000 shillings. But the amount you pay will, will always depend on the value of the car. So expect to pay between that 7,000 shillings to around 60,000 shillings. As for the fit hybrid, I got back four different quotations. The lowest was 37,500 shillings while the highest was 63,000 shillings. There was also a quotation of 52,000 shillings and around 60,000 shillings. So again, it will depend on the value of the car, but expect, expect to pay anywhere between 37,000 shillings to around 63,000 shillings for the 2014 model. The Aqua has a single engine option, which is a 1.5 liter hybrid. It's a front wheel drive car and it can sprint from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 10.7 seconds. The transmission method to this engine is only a CVT or a continuously variable transmission. Note that this hybrid engine used in the Aqua is exactly the same as the one in the Axio hybrid. The Honda Fit hybrid also has a single engine option which is also a 1.5 liter hybrid. It's also a front wheel drive car and it can sprint from 0 to 100 km per hour in 8.4 seconds. It's faster than the Aqua and I'll explain why in just a moment. Now, the previous generation of the Honda Fit Hybrid had a CVT gearbox, but now this 2014 model has an intelligent dual clutch drive. In other words, it has a 7 speed dual clutch transmission. This is a type of transmission whereby there are two clutches one shifts the odd gears and the other one shifts the even gears. These types of transmission are normally fast in shifting the gears and that's why this Honda Fit is able to sprint fast from 0 to 100 km per hour. I normally advise people against this type of transmission because they are not very reliable. Yes, they shift fast, they have a sporty characteristic to them, but they just don't last. And once something goes wrong, finding a proficient mechanic who understands them can be very difficult. So now this 7-speed dual clutch used in the Honda Fit is no exception. It's very important that you take note of this. There were three recalls of this Honda Fit hybrid in Japan. And all these recalls were with regard to this 7-speed dual clutch transmission. In total, 70,929 Honda Fit hybrids were recalled. And all these cars were specific to the Japanese market. Other markets were not affected. Remember, these are the same cars now coming to Kenya and other African countries from Japan. The first recall was due to an incorrect software program for the dual clutch control computer that would cause some cars to fail to start moving after the first gear failed to engage. In other vehicles, the second gear would not engage 
then the car will subsequently drive only with odd numbered gears. The second recall was due to the delay in the ability of the car to start moving after putting it in drive from park. Again, as a result of software program for the DCT gearbox. This delay would be followed by a blink of the transmission warning lamp. The third recall was related to the second one. Some cars would not move at all because of the DCT. So all in all, it's not a very reliable transmission. The CVT in the previous generation was more reliable. Even though the recalls were done, there is always still a chance that the defects can reoccur again. So it's very important that you take note of that if you are planning to buy a Honda Fit Hybrid. Only time will tell if this gearbox will be reliable in the Kenyan market. Let's now move on to fuel consumption. The Toyota Aqua is very fuel efficient. It is claimed that it can get up to 35 km per liter. That is now motorcycle territory. But in real world, expect between 20 to around 30, maybe 32 km per liter, which is actually still very good, if not excellent. The Honda Fit Hybrid, on the other hand, can get around 37.4 km per liter. That is what Honda claims, but that is too optimistic. Expect real world figures of between 20 to around 28 km per liter, which is still not bad. In terms of fuel efficiency, the Aqua is the clear winner. In order to achieve these impressive figures, you really need to be light-footed. For one, you need to avoid the rapid and hard acceleration. In town, just try to drive below 60 km per hour because now you'll be using the batteries alone and not the engine. But you also need to know that excessive use of the EV mode, that is the electric vehicle mode that uses only the battery below 60 km per hour. If you use this mode excessively, then the hybrid battery life will be degraded. Secondly, if you are driving on the highway, try to maintain speeds of below 100 km per hour. Avoid sudden braking and also do not change speed frequently. If you practice these driving styles, then you will easily be able to achieve around 30 to 32 km per liter in the Toyota Aqua and around 28 km per liter in the Fit Hybrid. The fuel tank in the Aqua is 36 liters and the one in the Fit Hybrid is 32 liters. Let's now take a very short fun fact break, then we will resume and take a look at the service costs. Welcome back. So how much will it cost to service these cars? Something to note is that in hybrid cars, the batteries are not serviced, as some people may think. They can only be replaced once they need replacement, but they are not normally serviced. For each car, expect to spend around 10,000 shillings on average for the minor service, which can be done between 8,000 to 10,000 kilometers if you use the recommended synthetic oil. But if you use mineral oil, then the service should be done after 5,000 kilometers. As for the major service, expect to spend an average of around 18,000 shillings for each car after 15,000 kilometers, again, if you use the recommended synthetic oil. But if you use mineral oil, then do the major service after 10,000 kilometers. The amount you spend will also depend on the quality of parts you use. Something else to note is that the brake pads in hybrid cars last much longer due to regenerative braking. Moving on to ground clearance. Both cars have a ground clearance that is below the recommended 165 millimeters. The Aqua Hybrid has a 140 millimeter clearance, while the Fit has a 135 millimeter clearance. So it's important to watch out for severe bumps, especially if the car is loaded. In terms of the brakes, they both get discs all around, with the front ones being ventilated. The carb weight of the Aqua is 1080 kilograms while that of the fit hybrid ranges between 1080 kilograms to around 1230 kilograms finally when it comes to the extra features these cars are almost similar both can offer alloy rims navigation led projector headlights fog lights parking sensors in addition the fit can also offer paddle shifts rear spoiler and the magic seats when it comes to looks, which one do you think looks better? Let me know in the comment section. 
I think the Fit Hybrid is better. It tends to look both sporty and mature. In terms of space packaging and practicality, Honda takes the day, especially those with the magic seats. The Aqua is not as spacious as the Fit. At the front, they both have adequate space, but at the back, they now part ways. The Fit offers more head and legroom than the Aqua. Passengers will be more comfortable in the Honda Fit. The rear seats can be folded down in both cars to create more room for storage, but do note that the boot in the Honda Fit is more spacious. The dash designs are simple but functional. Most of the controls are placed where you'd expect them to be. Everything is straightforward and well laid out, nothing much to complain about. So which one should you go for? That is the most important question. Now, the Fit Hybrid is more spacious, it looks good and is the better car to drive. It handles well and is responsive, especially due to that dual clutch transmission. But that same dual clutch transmission is the only reason I would advise someone against this Honda Fit. A hybrid car is in itself already complex due to the hybrid batteries. Coupling a complex dual clutch transmission to a hybrid powertrain is adding complexity upon complexity. And that's why you see that Honda recalled these cars three times to try and rectify the errors. No one can be sure that even after correction of those errors, the defects won't show up again. To make matters worse, it may be difficult to find the mechanics who fully understand how the hybrid works with the dual clutch transmission. You may buy this car now and use it for a few years, but somewhere down the line, this car may develop issues with that transmission. You will now have to worry about replacing the hybrid batteries as well as the transmission in case it develops a problem. So my recommendation is that just go for the Toyota Aqua. It's the most full efficient and has a rock solid reputation for reliability. It won't give you any problems. Its only issue is space. It's not very spacious. Toyota have perfected the hybrid technology. There's no question about that. But if you really want a Honda Fit Hybrid, then you'll be better off with the 2013 model that has a 1.3 liter engine and a CVT gearbox. That one will be more reliable than this hybrid with the dual clutch. Alternatively, you can just get the 2014 Honda Fit non-hybrid with either the 1.3 liter which can get around 20 km per liter or the 1.5 liter which can get around 15 km per liter. Still impressive fuel efficiency figures considering they are non-hybrids. They will be more reliable and easy to maintain. So I hope this has been helpful. If you've got any inquiries, don't hesitate to reach me. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. See you in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe.